cardboard envelope things um, that are the same size as the stamping plate basically. They always have the name which is kind of like taped over the edge of it um, to stop the plate from falling out in transit which is actually a great change that they made because um, when I first bought from them the situation where they didn't come with any stamping plates because they weren't put into the little boxes they were separate from the packages like these little cardboard boxes but now they put them into them which is good um, you can tell this brand new stamping plate because it's still got the blue plastic on it. This is another one like the last one that I um, stamped where it has multiple different images on one stamping plate. So you can do, try not to try and get rid of the glare, um, so you can do different looks with it. You can build up images and stuff. This one's got some, like it's also got some butterflies but it's got trees and birds and leaves and yeah. So we're going to do a little bit of stamping on my nails this time, on this hand here, which doesn't have anything on it except for some nail polish. Um, yeah, so I'm going to take off the plastic um, and I'm going to do that with a pair of tweezers, mainly because my nails are quite long on my working hand, it just makes life easier. So the first thing you want to do when you get a stamping plate is you want to clean it. Um, this will help with things stamping better. So, oops, I'll take some acetone on a lint-free wipe and just wipe over the stamping plate. This is just to make sure that there's nothing on the stamping plate. Um, they got there from the manufacturing process. That's really the only reason that you do that. And I'm also going to clean the stamping head, but I'm not going to use acetone to do that because acetone will destroy the squishy thing and it will make it cloudy. So for the stamp out head, in here I have uh, isopropyl alcohol, so I'm just going to spray some of that onto a lint free wipe, and then I'm just going to wipe over, always recommend the first time you get a stamp out head, wipe over it with isopropyl alcohol, because sometimes they don't pick up to start off with, it's almost like they have sort of like a filmy thing on them. Now, even though these are supposed to be lint-free wipes, I can see that I've got some lint on my stamper head. But that is fine because I have an easy way of getting that off. You can also clean it with soap and water. So, as usual, I have one of my lint wipe rollers. This is just the same kind of lint roller that you would use to get cat fluff and stuff off of your clothing. That's all it is. You can get them like really cheap at like a two dollar, at a one dollar store, two dollar store, whatever. You know, in Australia, um, somewhere like Nets or Cheapest Chips, um, you can pick up those kind of things. Pretty cheap. And they usually come with multiple packs of replacement sticky cartridge things. And you change them just like you change a toilet roll, quite frankly. Um, so that is cleaned up. I have um, a piece of paper to work on, um, kitchen towel, uh, because this can make a bit of a mess. Um, stamping polishes can make a bit of a mess. I have some sticky tape to clean up excess. Um, I have a scraper scrape the polish. The other two polishes that I'm going to use are black and gold, both from Born Pretty as well. So I'm going to start. Um, if you're wondering what is on my nails, it is Pale to the Chief from OPI. Uh, my nails kind of need refilling, but I'm not going to do that. So what I might do... I'm just taking a look at how long 
these, sorry, stay in frame, um, how long these images are. So they're kind of like the length of my longest nail. So I can take a little bit off the bottom, so that will work. Um, I might just start with this top one, let's see how we go. So just a bit of polish, scrape roll the stamper over it and as you can see it didn't actually pick up very well. Now there's a number of reasons for this brand new stamper. Um, these things sometimes happen. We don't assume that there's anything wrong yet. Best thing to do is stop, clean it off, It's a little hard to see because of the um, glitter. So. And there we have it. So, got a little kind of like a tree image on the back. I'm just going to clean off the stamper again. We'll do the same image. And again, I've shown you before that I tend to use the thumb with my other hand. Now, if you don't want to get stuff all over your other nails, then you wouldn't do that. There we go. Okay. Clean off the lint with the lint roller. Just to get any excess polish off the lint roller, there wasn't really any um, off the stamper. There wasn't really any. I am noticing that this head keeps on pushing down further in, which is it's okay, but not, not necessarily perfect. And then I'm going to do one more of these on the pinky finger. And you see, I roll it over the image, it tends to pick it up a little bit better. image works really well, really pleased with that. Considering how fine it is, like those little branches are super fine. Oh, how well you can see them. But they're really good. So now I think we might take, let's see, what should we do? I'm going to take my gold. It is a little harder to see um, through this stamper with the glitter in it, but um, easier to see with like the black than it is with the gold. I'm not sure how well you guys can see the gold on this particular base polish. But it's definitely there. <laughs> so again, I'm going to clean 
off the stamper plate. on your skin, take a piece of sticky tape, masking tape, something like that, and just, just push it out on the top of it on your skin, and it will literally just pick it up off your skin. No need to use nail polish remover or anything like that to take excess off. Just use a little piece of sticky tape. Works perfectly fine. Alright, so now we're going to take this polish that we're reviewing, the pomegranate red polish, and I think we might use, I think I might use this image here which looks a little bit like flowers. Now one of the problems I often have with red polishes when you're stamping them as they tend to end up looking very pink um, but this one is sort of supposed to look pink uh, even though it's called pomegranate red it's meant to be a pinker red there you go that looks so cool kind of reminds me a little bit of um cherry blossoms. So I'm just going to do that on the other two. is super pigmented um, as you can see it's going everywhere <laughs> which is actually a good thing when you're talking stamping and um, particularly if you're just a beginner if you've been doing it for a while you can pretty much use any polish but if you're a beginner a stamping polish is going to give you the best results so that would be my advice if you're a beginner is go with a stamping polish um, first off just so that you can learn how is best to do this kind of thing. Um, so what I'm going to do now is on this other finger I'm actually going to do um, I think a ruse just because I feel like it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the gold on that image there to do the background. Now, you can see there that I messed up and I don't have the inner image, inner part of the image. Sometimes it's the angle that you scrape at. But the thing with stamping is you don't have to, you don't have to use the first go. You can stop and clean up and start again and sometimes it's not you sometimes it is actually the image um, sometimes stamping plates don't have a clear like they're not evenly um, inscribed onto the actual plate this one is, it's, it's absolutely fine. It was, that was usually the uh, first for that one. Excuse my dog barking in the background. So we're going to use the, this colour is absolutely gorgeous. And I picked it up really, really badly. Again, use error. 
It's also because, um, as I said before, I'm noticing with this particular stamper that it, because you kind of push down on it, it's pushing in too far into the scraper. And so I'm not uh, into the holder. So when I push down, I'm not getting good um, contact. And you can see I only need a really tiny amount. Okay. Again, that did not pick up as well as I would like. Third time's the charm, they say. this particular image. Don't know that I got it in exactly the right spot. But it happens. You know, if you're not 100% happy, you can actually often stamp back over and get and fix things up. It doesn't always work. Depends on how intricate the design is. I just put that one just a little bit further over. But I think it's more... This might be one of those ones where it's not uh, entirely evenly etched. But um, I'm not too worried about it at all. So, so lastly, I'm going to go in with the black again. I mean, ideally, I should have used a different coloured red, which I do have, but I haven't pulled it out. So I'm going to do it in black. That was definitely the stamper that particular time because I felt it hit the edge of the folder. is just a tiny bit too big for the um, head of the stamp. These are all just my first impressions as well. Um, I hadn't used any of these prior to doing this. This one didn't pick up properly. You get the idea, not necessarily the best execution. Now, because I have put um, a quick dry top coat on my nails, um, just using a piece of sticky tape, Removing the majority of that image that I just did, and it literally just comes up on um, So yeah, when you make a mistake, or you really don't like something, you don't have to remove the whole lot. I mean, there's still a little bit on there, but I want to assume that it's the plate. It could be the stamper. Um, I generally don't use those sort of stampers. Um, I tend to use ones with a much firmer. This is this is a quite a. You can see how squishy that is. 
apart from that, it just keeps pushing into the thing. Um, I tend to prefer these ones which are stiffer. This one's actually really grubby. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to try this rose again, but with a stiff stamper instead of the really soft, squishy one, and see if that makes a difference. Picked up a lot better. It felt a lot better when I picked it up. This stamp is ever so slightly cloudy, um, unfortunately. I have another one somewhere, but I can't find it at the moment. And I'm not going to go looking for it any more than I just did. <laughs> um, okay, so it's, it's pomegranate red is so pigmented. In the words of, see that? Yep, so it's the stamper. It's not not the stamping plate at all. The biggest problem I had just then is I couldn't see properly because this is cloudy. So I've kind of got it slightly skewed. But that was 100% my fault, not, not the fault of any of this stuff. And you can see that picked up perfectly. So that brings it down to it being a stamper issue because that picked up and stamped perfectly. So that's the other thing is if you're a brand new stamper, uh, like brand new to stamping and um, it doesn't want to work for you, it could be the type of stamper you're using is not ideal um, for the way you stamp or for the type of image that you're actually stamping. Um, so try different types of stampers. Don't just think that because you've got that's the stamper that you bought, that that's the only kind of stamper. There are different types of stampers and they have different types of applications that they work best for, in my experience. These ones can be really good, um, mainly if they don't, this one just pushes too much into the um, holder, but this one might be a good one to use to like paint a design on, so like do a reverse stamping with, or for something that doesn't matter if um, it picks up the whole design because you only want like part of the design or whatever. Um, the fact that it's got holographic sparkles in the lid makes it great in my opinion. Um, so I'm just going to top coat these nails, um, tidy up my area a bit and then I'll be back. Okay, so there we have it, uh, the Born Pretty Stamping Plate uh, L071, it's a really nice stamping plate, particularly if you like doing kind of like tree type designs or um, bushes or whatever, they'd be great, these ones here in particular and these ones over here would be great background type designs. Um, like if you use like a fairly light colour, like a fairly light grey on a background, then you could put things in front of it. Um, that would be like really cool. Um, I like how you've got different options here for like say putting a branch out the side of, like on your branch to the side of your nail or whatever. Um, so there's a number of options. You can obviously turn them this way as well. You don't have to do them sideways. It's um, completely up to you. Um, yeah, so I really like this. I really like the little birdies. So you could do like birds in a tree, like just, you'd say like black, um, which is kind of cool. Which are all different types of options that you could use. So yeah, really nice stamper, really like stamping plate. 
really enjoy this one. Um, would totally recommend. Um, of course, I'm going to link this plate in the description bar below, as well as uh, linking this stamping nail polish. This is sort of like their metallic -y type of range, not their holographic range, but more of a metallic one. It's really beautiful. The pigmentation is perfect for stamping. A little bit goes a very long way. Um, it would be interesting just to paint a nail with it and see how that goes because it's such a gorgeous colour. It's got kind of like a pink sheen to it. Um, so really like that. That's pomegranate red in case you wanted to get the same one. But of course I will link it down below. And lastly the stamper, the squishy holographic multi-chrome stamper. Visually very aesthetically pleasing. Um, I love the this multicolored kind of look on the aluminium um, and the fact that they've put a hole in the bottom of it. Um, I've had one of these kind of stampers before that had no hole in the bottom of it which means you can't see placement which is fine if you're doing an all over nail design but um, for specific placement not much good. But I will say if you're intending to use this for specific placement the glitter is going to mess you up because although you can still see through it, it does sort of affect things a little bit, kind of makes it a bit cloudier, a bit harder to see, so be aware of that. There is another option that is just a normal clear head without the glitter in it, but it's holographic glitter, so I kind of wanted it for that. Um, not my preferred type of stamper. Um, it's a bit more squishy than I prefer, but um, still quite a good stamper. So nice big size so you can do whole nails if you've got like even quite, I mean as you can see I could do my whole nail with one of my big nails so from that point of view it's really good. Um, yeah so it's definitely worth um, getting one if you like this style of stamper um, and of course I will link it down below. Um, yeah, so I want to thank Born Pretty for sending these items for me to review for you guys. If you want to subscribe, click the button down there. Click the little bell if you want to get notified when I upload new content. Leave me a thumbs up if you like nail art type of videos. And leave me a comment down below. I try to respond to all comments. And I'll see you in my next video. See ya.